I'm going to fill the bottle of water to the same height, let it empty out of the small hole at the bottom. I'm going to record the height of that water every 15 seconds. I'll repeat that three times and get some averages and hopefully I'll plot and I'll get that half-life curve. So here goes nothing. I'm expecting this to be a curve. I don't know whether it's going to be accurately a exponential curve because I know that higher pressure when you get deeper water We should certainly see that curve. Whether we get exactly exponentially, I think it might be more like a 1 over x squared curve. We will see, we'll be able to do that analysis once we've done this a few times. I could probably be a little bit more accurate, I've realised here, by having a maybe a small set square to read between the water and the scale which is behind it. That would be an improvement I can see straight away. I think by doing three though, I'm going to have eliminated enough kind of random error that I will still get a accurate enough trend that I can do some analysis with. So this is another model of exponential decay. It should give us a graph like that typical GCSE radiation half-life graph. Okay, but this time instead of using like dice, which you'll probably have modeled half-life with before, rolling many dice, I'm using a bottle of water with a hole in the bottom. So what I've got, I've filled it up to the top, and I'm gonna start the stopwatch when it reaches a certain height that I've actually marked on the scale behind it and every 15 seconds on my stopwatch, I am going to just mark off the height of the water um, at that time. Okay, so that's the time I started. I've got some sources of uncertainty. One of them is caused by me using the stopwatch and having to look at the stopwatch, decide when the time is, and then make the mark. And another is by parallax, because the scale is behind the water so um, it actually depends where I look, where this get, the water level appears to be on that line. So I'm getting myself down to eye level and actually closing one eye when I do so to try and make that as accurate as possible. I've also, I'm watching the clock while I'm talking to you and I'm giving myself a little countdown of a kind of three, two, one, so that I'm not, I'm actually making the mark exactly on every 15 seconds. Now if I had a um, partner, then they'd be doing that countdown for me. They'd be paying attention to the clock themselves. We could use a camera set up to actually take the readings like so, and have got that camera set up, but I think if I do three readings and take an average, it should be accurate enough. Should be, fingers crossed. I'm just doing three and a half minutes. This is a two litre bottle just with a hole in the bottom. I've just done three and a half minutes because that's when they start to get too close together to be really accurate with them. It's quite chill really, it's quite a nice little experiment. That's gorilla physics. Totally into this physics, yes. So these are my set of readings. All right, let's get Excel on the case. Okay, so in Excel I just need time in um, lots of 15 seconds and height, and I just need to do three columns for the height of water and an average. The boring bit, so um, let me just time lapse this off or something. It's a pretty awful time lapse. Oh, and I have to do the averages. Remembering to do the same number of significant figures, it won't automatically show you a point zero even if you type it. Um, the data comes out, I tried to fit an exponential line to it and it doesn't fit it all that well as predicted. The polynomial line does, however, so um, I'm thinking this is not a straight up exponential decay. I'm going to try one more thing though, I'm just going to try um, taking a log of the height axis to see if I do um, get a straight line. I'm not all that hopeful, although I have got a pretty precise poly polynomial trend here, so I'm pretty happy about that, but um, it's not quite what you would say is an exponential curve. Yeah, it's not a straight line, it's a line with increasing gradient, so there's something else going on that is not an exponential line. If I plot 
1 over the time squared against h, I should get a straight line with a positive gradient. So let's try that out. Still not straight. No, it doesn't work. Okay, right, so it is a good enough approximation of a exponential decay. You can see there's a straight line portion, and what I would do probably is use that straight line portion to be, give me my decay constant. It is definitely a good enough approximation to try out with your classes at GCSE. You will get a pretty good looking half-life curve. It's not exactly an exponential decay throughout. If you wanted to take this to A level, then you'd probably be talking about combining the equation for pressure and depth with the kind of flow rate type thing, the force and flow rate type equations. Um, but it's pretty tricky stuff, I think, to analyze this any further. It's good enough to get us using the spreadsheet. It's good enough to get us some good and accurate techniques and discussing our uncertainties. You could say that towards the end of the bottle, there's a systematic error because it tends to be a straight line and then sort of dips after it, the Lund versus time graph, which should be straight throughout. It might be due to the shape of the bottle at that point. It tapers off and it goes into these little wells. So that could be something, and I was measuring from the very bottom of the bottle, not where the hole was, the height of the hole. So that is another thing, I'll show you what I mean. The bottom of the bottom, as you can see, has a different shape. It actually tapers, it's slightly narrower towards the bottom, and it's got these little wells. So we're all gonna change the way in which the, the water behaves just towards the end, the flow rate just towards the end. So actually, maybe I should have made zero the actual position of that hole which is slightly higher up than the very bottom of the bottle, which is what I meant zero at. So actually maybe that is causing that tapering towards the end. Maybe you could have, I think that probably is the way to do it if you wanted to do this in school, is to take a, a, the largest measuring cylinder that you could and drill a hole through the bottom. That measuring cylinder is gonna have a much more uniform scale. Also, if you use the measuring cylinder, then you're not gonna have so much of a parallax error. Now I think that, um, parallax error is neither going to be always in one direction, it's not going to lead to a systematic error, so I think my three repeats has probably been enough. You could repeat that more often, but I think that we can see you've got, a, got quite a lot of precision already on that line of best fit, in that it's quite close to all the points, like quite close to that polynomial line of best fit, which is not exactly what we wanted, is it? Thanks a lot for watching, this has been Guerrilla Physics, this has been roughly exponential decay with a bottle of water. So we did have another look at it and I'm grateful to my year 12 students because they went through it again and actually we found that um, just by taking away the little bit at the bottom I didn't change the results very much but what did change the, the trend was actually using a delta H okay so a difference in height between each of the points that did then lead to an exponential curve that fitted it well on Excel and once you logged it and a straight line with a negative gradient. So that's really useful, that's really good to think about. It's the rate of change of height that decreases exponentially, not necessarily just the height that decreases exponentially. Now that is probably because of the shape of the bottle and because of the, uh, the, the difference in height at the bottom, but we were able to kind of mitigate for that by kind of just working with a change in height rather than with the overall height. Yeah, one more thing, you get less precision on that graph it doesn't look as neat a line of best fit, but you do get more accuracy. So you are more on the trend you expect, that's accuracy, but the points are more scattered from that line of best fit, so that's less precise. So precision and accuracy, remember, are two different things. I think the enjoyment of physics is, which is actually taking a practical and refining it, thinking, what's the trend that I expect? and refining that until you do get there and you get that accuracy. Thanks a lot for watching Guerrilla Physics. We're all about you understanding physics more so you enjoy that physics more, so you get more confident and then you're gonna go ahead and do better in the exam. So, thumbs up. <laughs>